Very early day memories, yeah. I love the noise of a factory, just, just love the, love the excitement and the energy of, of what was going on here. I, I get great satisfaction from, from the fact that it's all as it was, or new enough all as it was. Yeah, I loved it. Loved the smell of the burning polish, loved the particular noises that came from the grinding wheel. Uh, there were skills on that factory floor that would date back a couple of hundred years. You can't but be proud, and not only I, but everybody on that factory floor are proud that they have kept what is rare in existence for so long. We have craftsmen here currently with experience of over 50 years each. So we've got a history of dedication and long service running back over the last 80 years. Every piece is handled individually. Every spoon, every fork and every knife. You know, Jimmy McCormick, when I worked in the cutlery company, I started in 1955. Oh, I'd have to retire shortly, I'd imagine, you know. Unless they shoot me. <laughs> no, I, I've got a will, I'll have to. The bigger story behind the scene, yeah, has to be, yeah. I mean, I'd say a lot of people don't realise even what goes on, how it's done, how it's achieved. Yeah, well, if your quality is good, you're going to get people to come back and buy and buy with you all the time, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm proud of your work, like, quality you'll have to sell. It's the scale of um, making something by hand and of course it's vital that we have good quality. The knowledge and skill behind that, it's experience, it's those guys' experience that's able to produce that kind of quality. You can feel quite proud to say that when you go into the showrooms and you see all these lovely pieces displayed, you know, that you had a, a lot to do with making that piece as it is. Fourth of January, 1950. I come in as a, on a three months uh, trial basis. Uh, it was a long three months. It was a craft, and a highly crafted skill it was for all the people that worked on it. Because if you didn't get it right, at the end of the day, it was it was sent back as scrap. I think Newbridge Cutlery is known for its craftsmanship. The employees have been here for years. They spent their whole life in the cutlery. Never worked anywhere else. And they were craftsmen. It's a nice thing about Newbridge Silverware. We get in raw material and we make the product right through to the very final stage. So it's uh, silver plated, it's packaged, and then it's sold in the showroom. You're taking a piece right from the ground and, and building it and making it and designing it, cutting it, polishing it, and then plating it, you know? It's, uh, it's important, very important, because a lot, of, a lot of places have gone by the board. You know, it's important to have the homegrown uh, skill, if you like. There's a lot of people here that worked in here, and their sons and their daughters worked in it. You had fathers, sons and daughters, you know, and, and that still goes on, you know, but that's still going on. I've worked with plating all my life, and it was my uncle who actually got me into that trade, and I've been in it ever since. That's 50 years ago. We have the Tony family here at the moment. Tony Tony, who finally retires this summer, has 65 years service under his belt. His daughter Emma is here over 20 years, and uh, his granddaughter has started to work with us this summer. So there are many cases of families being associated with our company. I started Newbridge Cutlery in 1955. So I retired when I was 65, it kept me on. The machines haven't changed at all. It's just the same as it was when I walked in here. The first operation is blanking. We get blank sheets of metal in and we blank them out. We get the rough components and then we have rolling. The blanks are rolled 
Then we have clipping, the bulb section of the spoon is clipped. Then we have shanking, where the pattern is put into the handle of the spoon. After shanking, we have bowling, where um, the bowl is put in. Then we have linishing, where the edges are sanded. Then we have vibing, where the, the rough edges from the linishing is, are polished off. Then we have polishing from the polishing machines, then they go to the plating shop to finish them. Certainly these machines would go back um, 50, 60, 70 years. They have their own sort of personality, I'd say. Um, but they are unique in themselves, yes. I find I get a great sense of satisfaction that the machine's still going, that I'm able to keep it running and that they're still able to do the job they were designed to do perfectly, you know. Newbridge is, is unique now. Newbridge cutlery is unique because a sheet comes in and it goes out the other end in a canteen of cutlery. There's no other cutlery factory does that anymore. And uh, it's just amazing. It's so, it's so new, you know, and shining, you know. It's, oh yeah, it's really good. I'm sure William has struggled down the years trying to maintain and, and, and hang on to this process because uh, it is, I suppose, um, it would be heavily uh, dependent on people, you know, and skill. If I was younger, I had to start again, I would, yeah. I had no regrets, no, never any regrets from coming into Newbridge Cutlery. Oh, I do it all over again, yeah. It was a very happy area, very happy, yeah. Enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, this company has been challenged many times in the past. We survived the world war in the past and we survived many recessions. We were challenged recently by the financial crisis. And we believe that we are now in a position to move forward into a new era and hopefully a new generation will come on board to bring it from here and beyond. But I go through the whole shebang without a shadow of doubt. Yeah, I've enjoyed it, you know. Oh yeah, when you enjoy your work, you always go back to it again. Yeah.